Hey, it's the last day of ISTE 2015 in Philadelphia, and there's one more set of poster sessions I'm going to be able to visit here, so we will take a look. This one's called Wonder to Wonder. Hello. Oh, do you mind again? I'm the, I'm the Periscope guy now? Uh, <laughs> This guy. Oh, okay. Do you do you mind? <laughs> Tell us about wondering. So this is our um, way that we introduce research to our students. We let them all kind of pick a topic. We all close our eyes, something you're curious about, and then we use the Big Six research model to introduce research skills and the research process to our students. And then everybody makes a product to show what they learned, and then they share it with their peers. So we all become other wonders and adventure seekers and information seekers. And what grade? Uh, elementary. This was a K-5 project. We've done it with as low as kindergarten and then our, also our fifth graders. And we scaffold the information so the process that you do use with your kindergartners is a lot different than what you do with fifth graders. Yeah. And tell me about the Big Six. So Big Six is a research model built around the idea that you are learning a process you're going to use for any pro project that you do, but you're integrating the content. So you start with a task, what you want to know, then you find resources, you use them, and then you share, synthesize, and put everything together. What has been the most interesting wonder that a student has come up with? Oh. I have to think. Um, they like things having to do with the human body, especially like third and fourth grade boys, so we can all like giggle about it, you know. Um, do you let them pick that topic? Or, or, okay. So we explain that your topic, you might not find an exact answer to your topic. You might just find some information that would help you know more about that. So, for example, if you pick something about the human body, you might just be learning about a body system and not actually how that works in your body. Um, We've had one last year. We had a girl who wanted to know about mermaids, or if, if mermaids were real. Why do cats land on their feet? Um, some about we did one about pop rocks. Why do pop rocks pop? We had a kid who explored that, and he was able to find the answer. So that was a fun one. What do they do for their answers? So what did he make for his pop rocks to, to show others? So we don't actually, kind of different from a genius hour idea, we don't actually make a product, uh, like a physical thing. They usually make a visual, so they make a movie. We use the app 30 Hands sometimes or iMovie, some, some kind of presentation tool that they make a presentation. They usually use one, we kind of scaffold it down. They use one picture and they put their voice over it. So we're not into spending lots of time making our product, but they share. And then we have a view, what we call a viewing party. And they give reviews to each other. They fill in stars, and they kind of finish off with that idea of they've shared what they use. And do you have a uh, a page about this? Is that a s'more? All right. And is that where's the link for that? There's, there's your Twitter. Oh, I bet there there are people on Periscope who screenshot this stuff. So s'more.com slash one pcw1 so that's great they love the idea of a viewing party yeah so when when you interview you get hearts so let's renee had shared some really great things simple especially for primary grades hi oh, look at all the look at all those hearts. oh i feel famous i've been on periscope and everything great yeah good morning it is morning no is it after no it's 11 it's still morning it's been a weird day yeah um, I will say that every kid can do research and every grade can do research and it's about teaching kids the right way to do things and then they become lifelong learners. Yeah. They love your ideas. Hey, thanks. <laughs> Feel free to visit us and have your kids wonder. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great day. <laughs> My name's Tony, not Periscope Guy, FYI. <laughs> well, that was how you were described to me. Uh, oh, man. So... So then, I, it's kind of my thing, I guess. So I, I bought yesterday, because I saw a coupon code for GoDaddy for 99 cents, TonyScope.com. So it's not... It's, no, I didn't, but maybe... No, I don't want to be known as that. My name's Tony. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Morning on the West Coast. Yeah. Okay. Well, 10 best apps. I don't, I don't see stick around on there. Darn. No, there, there are better apps than, than stick around for... Depends on your purpose, right? <laughs> oh, there's 
There's giant QR codes, but no link with them. So we like Tony Scope. Um, actually, I linked to that. I, I, would, I did a search, and I found this site called QuickScope. And so that's what I've linked TonyScope.com to. And you can see archives, and you can fast forward and rewind the, the, the replays, which you can't do with regular Periscope. So it's kind of neat. I don't, it's not a Twitter-sanctioned uh, app or website, but it works for now. Yeah, it is pretty nice. All right. Well, I want to. I want to go to this other booth. I think this might be the best named booth, and there there are some pretty good poster session names around here. But uh, this one is called "If These Walls Could Talk" and features augmented reality. I mean, it's a perfect name, um, and that's where you don't need a QR code. You need an app and maybe a subscription to a channel, but then uh, no QR code. It just recognizes the picture as a trigger and layers information on top of it. So. Um, let's see if we can, if she doesn't mind uh, having a microphone. Can I what they were? You? Okay. Oh, you're back again. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm famous now uh, for coming back. Um, uh, they came. I'm sorry, I got confused now. Cause now. <laughs> I'm, sorry. I'm so sorry. Um, and then their videos pop up. So when we had the families come as a end of curriculum study to a celebration of what they did. The parents were able to log in with our class account and then see what they, their videos for their Egypt unit. But we did the same thing with our first grade. They did study parks. And so we had them create little trigger cards as well. So they were, when people came to see, their video popped up of them talking about their park design and all that stuff. So these are just examples of what you could do with augmented reality in the elementary classroom. Yeah. What was your biggest surprise doing this with kids? Um, how easy it was using the Erasmus app. Um, we had kindergarten, we didn't have the Erasmus app doing it by themselves, but the other grades were able to attach their trigger card to their video by themselves. Um, and the way that the teachers actually grasped this was amazing. Um, they really wanted to do it because it takes QR codes to another level. So it's not a QR code. It's taking student artwork, as you can see on the table, and then making it come to life. Awesome. Do you want to, should we? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Come follow me. <laughs> Did you watch your last video? No. Am I on there? Where am I? I didn't watch it. It's gone. It, they, they leave after 24 hours usually. Oh, really? I try to put them on YouTube or something. Oh, I'll have to watch it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at some of your other triggers you have here. Oh, yeah. If you want to tell us about any of them, like where they go, that would be awesome. Um, our first graders learned about um, the food chain and where their food comes from. So for homework one night, they had to draw a picture of what they had for dinner. And then in science class the next day, they used an app called Poplet where they showed you a food chain of their food items broken down and where it comes from. So just in case people aren't familiar with Erasmus, let's uh, back up. They, when all you do, you, didn't, you don't push a button or anything. You just open Erasmus and it recognizes that student's picture and knows to put your, the poplet on top of it, the, the image. So with Erasmus, there's actually a few steps. Um, you have to create a class account first. Um, and then you log in the devices with the class account. And then when you're ready, you just upload a video to Erasma, and then you have to have some sort of trigger card to attach that video or photo to. I love that your trigger cards here are kid drawings. Yeah. That's, that is super cute. Yeah. It, and I, I like the, that it mixes the physical with the digital. Because yes. little kids need to draw. They need to, they need to draw on paper, and, and this is neat. Um, cardboard collages of their shelters that they studied for shelters around the world. So this was actually, instead of the standard kid-drawn card, it was something like a mosaic piece of art. Um, and they made them all themselves. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I'll do this middle one. And so the video that's popping up, we actually took the video to the next level. So instead of a standard video, we used a green screen backdrop using an app called Do Inc. Um, and then the student in here, he's actually talking in Mandarin because um, we're an immersion school. So everything we do has a language component. So it's either going to be in Spanish or Mandarin. 
So, do, do you, I should know this off, off the top of my head, but I don't, is Erasmus available for Android? Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And it's a free app. Yeah. So, the, so then parents can come in with their phones. It doesn't matter if it's Android or iOS and, and get to scanning. Yep. We give them all of our account information. So when they come in to see their projects their student works on, they just bring any device that they have. And as long as they're logged into our private uh, class accounts, they can see what their child's worked on. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. Uh, oh, and I, one, one thing. I think you win the award for the best named poster session. Thank you. <laughs> so if these walls could talk. I love it. I love it. <laughs> yeah, follow her on Twitter. She's great stuff, great enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Let's see... I was on the lookout for ones that have student presenters. Oh, hello. Hello from uh, the USA, <laughs> from Pennsylvania, France, huh? So if you're, if you're from France, how, do you, how did you find out about, how did you find this Periscope when you're in, in France? Did you follow me already on Twitter? Or did you just find it in the Periscope app? Oh, it's Suzanne Sally. I love her. She does really great work with uh, iPads in her school district. Follow me on Twitter. Terrific. I love it. Uh, and she's uh, from Phoenix, Arizona area and has been really working with iPads for several years. So this one is about digital storytelling with movie trailers. Good morning, Suzanne. Do you, do you mind if I record you? All right. You're, uh, I've been watching your Periscope videos that you've You haven't? Uh-huh. Terrific. Well, tell us uh, well, who you are and then show us around. Now, with the, what I do with the camera, sometimes I go to your name tag because people are always asking for Twitter and I'll pan around. Well, you've watched, so you know. All right. <laughs> well, I'm Suzanne Sully. I'm the Education Technology Specialist for the Creighton School District in Phoenix, Arizona. And Not Mesa, apparently. No, not Mesa. I first I live in Mesa, and so some sometimes they seem to get that on my name tag. So we're just here talking about doing iMovie trailers using um, the iMovie app, either on iPads or on Mac computers, and um, we have teachers using them as a way to introduce topics to their students, building a little background that hook to get the kids engaged. But we also have students creating trailers. Um, for a variety of different ways. And it's, this is really a good way to get students into creating movies without having to be overwhelmed by a lot of the editing tools. Yeah, because it's a completely scaffolded. Like, the, they don't get to pick how long a clip is because Apple has picked it for them already. Well, and because they don't get to pick how long a clip is or how much text they can put in, it has to be short. I think it really helps the kids learn to be concise and not go on and on and on. But we've had kids do book trailers um, as either an alternative to a book report or an extension to a written book report. Um, they've done biographies, so Abraham Lincoln, George Washington. Um, we've seen it used in science. One of our teachers uh, did a whole le- unit on storms, and at the end, this is how the kids showed their learning, was they created trailers on storms, and they get really creative in, in what they do. So, What's been the most interesting topic that you've seen a student make a trailer about? Um, Well, I think one of our storm trailers is really interesting because it was about tornadoes. And we're in Arizona. We don't have tornadoes. So it was good. Those little dust devil things. Yeah. Yeah. Just those things. But these kids did, um, in the middle of their trailer to kind of demonstrate a tornado, they took black butcher paper and wrapped a kid up in it. And the kid twirls around in there. So he's looking like a tornado. Yeah. So it's really cute. We have it. It's in there, but you'd have have to find where it is so yeah go ahead and show some. what's what's your top tip for having students make movie trailers well I think probably one of the top tips is you have to make sure to tell the kids to be very concise in what they're writing because we've seen kids go in and when they put in their text into the trailer yeah they make it really long and because it goes quick you can't always, you don't always have time to read all the text. So I think that's one of the big things that our teachers have learned as well as the students. 
So is there a place where they can watch some of these trailers? Um, you know, I haven't put them online, but I could because we have our, our project in our district for our mobile devices is called iAchieve, and we have a website. You have great, great blog posts. Too. I do have great blog posts, and I just did a blog post about iMovie trailers. But um, I have a tab on our website that has, if for ISTE 2015, that has a lot of our resources in there. Here's the tornado one. Okay. Let's see if we get the one where the kids... Um, so what's the address of the blog while we... Um, oh, great. You're going to ask me that, and I... It's in my Feedly. I don't know. I don't know what the address is. Oh, well, I think... It's asking somebody for phone numbers now. I think if you just looked up Suzanne's I Achieve Reflections, because it, it's for, through Blogger, so it's a blog spot. So it comes up. Yeah. Oh, there's our Abraham Lincoln biography. And if you've never done these movie trailers before, you see that um, you know there's, they're really fast-paced. They don't linger on one image at all. But that's what movie trailers do when you're in the theater. I mean, they are boom, 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 fast, fast, fast. So, yeah, if you want your kid to do something really extensive, you know, your students, you might not, this might not be the best choice, but a lot of the teachers are using them as a supplement to a written project. So the kids already wrote a biography about Abraham Lincoln, and now they're going in and kind of extending their learning. And we always feel like multiple exposures to content is the way that our kids really learn and embed their thinking and their understanding. So... This is one way. You know, from, from even making my own trailers and what kids do too is that we watch them. We, we, <laughs> I do. We'll talk about that in a moment. But I watch my own trailers again and again. So I, even though I'm, I wrote it and put it together, I, it's fun to watch. And it, it turns you know, something kind of ordinary very exciting. Well, I've done some for my family. For my daughter-in-law for her birthday, I did one because I have a 21-month-old grandson. So I did one with pictures of my grandson. And then for Father's Day, my husband and my son, I made a different trailer for each of them with pictures of our family and kind of a story about our family. And it just became, I think, you know, one of the best presents that they had gotten. I don't think I have this online, but I really should do it. So when um, my son was really a baby, I had all these little clips of him trying to roll over, you know, and getting frustrated and all that. And then we have on video the first time he rolled over for real and made that into a trailer. And it's like, you know, Connor struggling to turn over. And it is so, so neat to see. And what great memories to keep for them to have you know, when they get older. Well, and um, my son and daughter-in-law, they play these vi the trailers over and over for my grandson, and he just laughs, and he claps, and he goes, more, more. <laughs> so um, there's a question um, from Adam Jones. Hey, Adam. Uh, how do you get them over not understanding how to use iMovie? Well... Yeah, the kids catch on fast. And the trailers are so simple. Yeah, it's different than a full-on iMovie and trying to move clips around. Way, yeah, this is a good way to introduce them to that video editing. And then I think it's an easy transition into using the regular iMovie projects where they're creating a full-length movie and doing the editing and, and all of that. So this one is just so easy. Uh, about cact cacti. Right? You, might, you know you're from Arizona then. Yes. Well, we've actually used that when we've done some presentations and trainings with teachers. We have them, we introduce them to the trailers, and we have them go in and create one. And, you know, sometimes the hardest part about creating one is thinking of, what's my topic? How am I going to get all my images? What do I want to say? So I actually have a folder in Google Drive that I give the teachers a link to that has pictures that I've taken. So I tell them copyright free. They have my permission to use them. And um, we give them a sheet with Saguaro facts. And so we just have the teachers go in and in like 15, 20 minutes they have. So you presented that at Mobile Learning Experience. And Wes Fryer was talking to me about it the other day. He was so impressed with how you organized that. Oh, good. Well, thank you. That's that's quite an honor to know that he was impressed with that. Should have been, should, should have been burning. <laughs> okay, so let's look and see what you have on the board here. So the, there's you you have some steps on taking on uh, going through an iMovie trailer. So you got to choose a template and one that makes sense for your content, right? You know, there there are different ones, and a family one doesn't really make sense for you know yeah, for for, for topics yeah. or something or something. yeah. And I think you also look at, because these have um, 
um, music built into them. I think you also need to kind of listen to the music and go, is that music really appropriate for my movie? Yeah, and, and then um, do kids storyboard. We'll, we'll talk about that in a moment, but there is no voiceover. So the words that are on the screen, you have to be really concise with because you don't get to talk over them. But if you put in a video clip, you can turn off the sound to the audio sound, the music soundtrack, so you can hear any audio that's in your video clip. So. There's, but there's such short clips. You know, you, you, yeah. It's really not yeah. meant for you to have to have a voiceover. And then um, step where, where do, oh step two is over here. <laughs> <laughs> then step two, so, so iMovie trailers have a built-in script um, that you can kind of fill in when you, when you get started, when you customize, I guess, the outline. And then they have their own built-in storyboards um, but where you add photos. And it doesn't, where it says landscape, you know, that you, you tap there and you can get to your photo library. Or if you're on a Mac, you drag in there. But, and it tells you how many seconds long it would be. Uh, but... You don't have to put a group photo and a two shot yeah. there. It can be anything you want. And so sometimes that, that's, kids have a hard time getting over that. Cause you, and I do too when I'm making my own trailer. I see, oh, landscape. I'm like, wait a second. It doesn't have to be landscape, but in my head, I, I think so. Yeah. So, so what, what do you have over here? Well, I, I have over here, a, you know, we, we talk about this is digi digital storytelling. And so we kind of take the kids through the steps of digital storytelling. And part of digital storytelling means the kids are going to create a storyboard themselves of, to kind of plan out their trailers. So I have a friend named Tony Vincent who has... Your name's even on your, uh, on your poster. That's it cool. Is, it is. Who has created some storyboard templates for all 14 of the planners that are in the I, iMovie iPad app, but I think you also have some for the Mac app too. All of, yeah, people really like these, so I've, I've spent two days of my life creating these, um, but they're worth it because you don't see that it's landscape. All you see is that it's 1.1 seconds, so it, it gets that out of your mind. It's good for planning, especially when you're sharing yes. iPads and you don't, you don't, you don't, don't have time and, for that. And I mean, I even use them when I'm creating my own trips. Me too. Because it helps me, if nothing else, know where I need to put in text, um, how many pictures I'm going to need to gather to put in their pictures or uh, photos. Um, so it's been great. And then there's a, this other one over here that's kind of, we have teachers use this this other one because it really tells the kids they're going to do a proposal to their teacher of this is what I want my trailer to be. And it helps give them some tips on which trailer they might I'm glad you I'm glad you like that. Yeah, I went through every trailer and tried to put them in a genre so that students can just check them off. The students to give do a proposal to their teacher of this is what I'm going to do this is how I'm going to do it and then the teacher can kind of have an idea yeah and somebody asked where those are located so you can get my trailer uh, PDFs at learninginhand.com slash trailers and I have some samples there collected and if you have better examples I'd love to replace some of the ones that I have there already um, and the other thing is that these are all fillable PDFs. So if you wanted to fill them in uh, using like Adobe Reader or um, on in Preview on the Mac, and I even so so I bought I bought software to make this happen because you can't do it. You can't make fillable PDFs for free, and you can actually check these off like online, isn't that? I, I in that in that case, I kind of tickled myself when I, I was like, oh wow, I can I can make <laughs> make that. So somebody asked to repeat it. These are these are uh, fillable PDFs, and. Uh, there, you can just check them out, learninginhand.com slash trailers, and they go along with every iPad and Mac movie trailer. And were you going to show us one on... Well, this, is, this is actually a lesson that our t one of our teachers did, where he kind of gave the kids their project, what they were going to talk about, and... Um, some stuff here with because they were working in groups and their different tasks and then he even gave them some video tips down here so that's from that's from a teacher not hold, from hold the iPad steady it gives people headaches when you're shaky definitely you just let don't, don't do what I'm doing on Periscope and I'm all over the place um, watch for wind breezes yeah and the microphone the definitely. kids were going outside and, and doing little video clips and then the popping peas like I just did for, for our Periscopers yeah Record at different angles. Yeah, those are those are really really good tips. So, oh, and we have kids. Just some more pictures. You want to? Yeah. Yeah. 
It, this is as, as the students are creating um, or working on putting their projects together. So they're doing their storyboards, um, they're outside videotaping, and they, this was one with the storms. So they got real creative. They took a fan out there so they could have blowing leaves and perfect and things. This is some teachers at Mobile 2015 working on their trailers. Yeah. So, yeah, record this periscope. People have been asking that. And then people always ask about the mic if you're new to seeing this. This is an iRig Mic HD. Um, it's like $99 on Amazon. I have my own URL shortener called TonyV.me. So go to TonyV.me slash microphone, and it's, that's a short link. And somebody else asked me something else about... I, I, the, the questions went by and I forgot them. You, you might have to repeat them because with Periscope, they're there for like a moment and then disappear. So that, that's, yeah, yeah, they go really quick. But um, yeah, and the thing about Periscope is I can't see what my battery is. And I found about um, one hour wears out my whole battery from 100%. So uh, it's, that's bad. <laughs> I have a chart every chance I get. But this microphone, uh, it connects to the lightning port so I can't charge while I'm doing this but that's all right <laughs> uh, so asking what is on your website I don't know if that's mine or Suzanne's I have just the movie trailers in a in a blog post and then you have like you do so much more than movie trailers you have all sorts of ideas on on your website yeah on our website our I achieve website which you I think you showed the the UR or the QR code um, because we do iPod touches as well as iPads and so we have a lot of things on there we have copies of agreements we have management ideas um, just a whole a plethora of things um, lists of the apps that we're using on both iPods and iPads so because we still use our iPods because they're great for some of those younger kids fit right in their hands Great. I'll answer the, the URL shortener in a moment, but I don't want to keep you from, from your, your public here. But thank you for taking time with us, and let's give her some hearts. Uh, okay, I want to talk to you about... Oh, yeah, my URL short. I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we leave here. But thanks for sharing. This thank you. And it's fun to see my little movie trailers on your poster board. <laughs> I know. We love it. Awesome. Well, I have... <laughs> A link to a some more flyer on iMovie trailers that has a link to these and a bunch of other stuff that you've done. And All right. Like Thanks for sharing. I like you a lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Have a good rest of ISTE. Yeah, you too. So I, I've had my own URL shortener, TonyV.me, for a few years because I, I was using TinyURL and, well, TonyURL.com was taken. So uh, I chose to use uh, TonyV.me because it's short. And I use a service called URLs, Y-O-U-R-L-S. And uh, you have to have hosting. So I have like a GoDaddy host and you install the software. So it's a little complicated to set up, but then it's my own URL short. I'm the only one who uses it, nobody else. Um, Wes Fryer has a really great write-up on this. Um, so if you look up Wes Fryer in URLs, Y-O-U-R-L, I can't spell out loud. <laughs> URLs with the with the word U in it. So now there are two people here. Uh huh. This is Chris Giles. How you doing? Oh, <laughs> microphone. What's up? Tell me about your button. Oh, hey. This is my second button, and she told me it's one of the top three that she's made all day. Oh, you can go like somewhere and make a button right now. Yeah, at the Skype uh, Microsoft booth. You go in and you can choose. You have 18 different um, backgrounds to choose from. And then they have a little circle so you know where to stand. They have tape on the floor so you know where to stand. And then, you know, my first one was like, but my second one was beautiful. Yeah. So I'm, do you want to, what, what's, what's your big takeaway from ISTE 2015? This is my first time being here. So my takeaway is i have kind of overwhelmed. And I've gone to a few sessions. And then you walk out and you go, I've gone to one session, but I missed 17 other ones that I really want to go to. And then I've. And it's called FOMO. I know. And then. Fear of missing out. Yesterday, I spent half a day in a session, walked out, and realized I missed 500 other sessions I wanted to go to. But my half-day session was excellent. Good, good. Yeah. So I think my takeaway is I need to come next year. You know, I haven't come for a couple of years, and I kind of, I mean, I've had fun. I love this, and Periscope's been really fun. 
but I, when I'm at home, I can be in all the sessions at once. When I'm here, I can only be in one session at a time, really. So there's some advantages to uh, hashtag not at ISTE. Right. And I find was when I wasn't here, I followed the hashtag at home. Here, I don't follow the hashtag at all. I'm just so busy walking around to session to session. I haven't even been on the hashtag to see what people are posting other than my own stuff that I posted. Well, the hashtag ISTE2015 is pretty useless. I mean, it's just like it flies by so fast to... Yeah, so like in my session and, and a lot of others, we have our like our own session hashtag. Otherwise, you'd never find things within that room. That totally makes sense. Yeah, I think it's like crazy. So I need a picture today with you when you have time. Yeah. Well, here we'll... Sometimes people will screenshot for them. Yeah, and so I hate vertical video. You know that, but... Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll do that. Hates, Tony hates vertical video uh, and comic stands. I, <laughs> sometimes I have to embrace both, but uh, there's there hearts for that. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. warned that you were going to come by. You were warned? <laughs> Dr. Christie. Oh. <laughs> Lynn and Charlotte all wouldn't be like, Tony's walking around with his camera. And we didn't even know until like halfway into the conversation. And they looked and went, wait a second, what are you doing? Well, and, the wild part is that there's you know, 31 people watching right now and they can ask questions. Oh, that's really neat. Well, the answer is yes, no, and sometimes. <laughs> so, so now I got to talk to John Samuelson. Are you busy, John? No. If Tony Vincent asked me, I am never too busy for Tony Vincent. That is a rule of my life. So, so John, I, what I do is I linger on people's name tags while they talk, so they people screenshot or they try to find you. So, um. I want, I want to hear about your poster, but before this, this is something I found out people don't know. You've changed your Twitter name. You used to be iPad Sammy, and you're still iPad Sammy in my heart, but um, you're also John Samuelson. When you change your Twitter name, do you lose all your followers? What's, what's the process? What, what happens there? It's not really um, too much of a process. I, I managed to lose probably about 4,500 to 5,000 followers, actually, is how much I lost. But that was just because I think there were a lot of bot accounts that just follow iPad, maybe, or look for Apple things. So they're, are they really followers if they're just kind of phony accounts? I don't know. Yeah. So, so you can go into Twitter and you can change your username anytime. It doesn't change your profile pic. It doesn't change anything but, but your username and that URL. Your followers come with you. The people you follow are there. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, seriously, it's that easy. I just What I did was I was holding my name. Un a long t for a long time and then I decided finally to switch over so I just went in and released my name real quick and then I typed it in and it's just typing it in, in the settings and then you're right back and then I saved iPad Sammy just in case I didn't want anybody to jump on it and I don't, yeah, that's I don't that's exactly Sammy's so, so people have been periscoping I was around with my friend Wendy Wells yesterday and she's trying to tell people well it's Wendy Wells ed tech but there's no C and so we had a little strategy session after that and she changed her, her Twitter name to the Wendy Wells because there's already a Wendy Wells oh, that's and and that's easy to say and you know and it, it, it did affect her periscope account weird but otherwise there's not really any bad effects but I did tell her go back in and get your old one and tell people you have a new one um, just you know through a different email address right. Okay, so a uh, question from the internet. What is an innovation strategist? Yes, well, I like to think it's a fancy word for a tech person, but what we do in our district is, well, in our district this year, it can mean anything that your boss tells you that it means. But for us, we do a whole combination, and we try and get teachers integrating technology by teaching model lessons. We advise them on what types of devices they need in their classroom. We advise, the, you know, advise them on what to use. So they basically tell us what they're trying to teach, and then we try and go in and try and help them with whatever tools we have in our bucket to try and get them learning and integrating technology and getting kids to be creative. All right, people watching, let's do a little brainstorming. There's been so many different names for tech specialists, tech coaches, innovation specialists. What are some other ones that you've heard? And while they're, while they're typing, do you have what, what other names have you possibly been called? Well, and I, we're, so we're called, what are, what's our nickname, Matt? The, the, they call us in the district office. In Ostrats. which integrators, coordinator of innovation. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I was thinking some. I, I'm thinking we need to change it now. That what they're trying to do is direct we're ro direct right. What I was trying. We were actually talking about this this morning. I think that um, tech oh. dudes, 
I like tech dudes, but um, uh, so what we're they're trying to change us to future ready something something, and then I'm like I definitely am not going the future ready route. So they might we might have a bunch of other people, and then I will protest silently and not take that title. So I think we we need to be more future ready. That's toast t- teacher on special assignment. That's legitimately what we are. We're just toasts. So yeah. Well yeah. So anyway. Uh, okay, so you have a cool poster here, and everything's about signal to noise. It looks like you even have a Twitter account for this. Yeah, it's thanks. the Student Media Film Festival, and we want to hear about it. Okay, so this is one. I took this over. So, you know, Tony, when you move across country, you just take a new job in a district, and they give you their 15-year-old film festival to take over because the person's retiring, and so there's not too much pressure as we have about 1,000 people attend. So I tried really not to mess it up too much, but now we're kind of trying to take it to the next level. We've got a video over here. Let's see if we can actually get it going. A video over here that's our high school drama winner that I think really translates well because it doesn't need a lot of sound in here. And it's we there are many categories. The kids make five minute videos. We have a maker space, coding um, festival, and teachers, uh, students show off what they're doing before the film festival. And then we have a big awards ceremony. So look at, look at those cam. I'm admiring the camera angles. No, you should watch this, Tony. You would really enjoy this one. And I did. This is one of those films I showed down at the mobile learning experience. That's me after ISTE's done. Yeah, right. And so the, I think I think that this is a I think this is a great video. I and our, the whole family got involved with this one, and it's on the Oregon coast. It's called Home, and it doesn't have a lot of dialogue. It's just you know, it speaks for itself. So, and we have different categories. There's like PSAs, create, uh, there's music video, news reporting, all sorts of things. So we're trying to now take it over and give it our own little flair since it's been going in the same direction for about 15 years. So where can they watch these online? Yes, so we have a website right now, and what I and you'll like this one, Tony. The what what we're trying to do right now is I'm trying to figure out ways they haven't really re- been releasing the videos, which I think is a crime for the district. So I'm starting to go through the YouTube, straighten it out, make them public instead of unlisted, and we're making Stampsy sites right now. So what Stampsy is, it's like a Pinterest that has makes it into a fancy website, and this is the first one I use where we're putting up all the finalists and the. Yes, it looks like Cannon Beach, right? It is. And so um, so we're going to make Stampsy sites. Drama is the first one I did, but we the finalists have been being shown, but we want to show we the the winners have been being shown. We want to show the finalists too. So we're going to make Stampsy sites and then if you follow that video BSD account, we're just going to start tweeting out the stamps and you can watch them because they're great. The K through 12, it's awesome. We love doing it. We j- I just feel like we need to display the kids creativity more video is getting a ton of hearts it's like i want to look i want to watch you talk but at the same time i think people would be mad if i turned away right no, now no don't watch me talk watch this video it's in, it's incredible because um the boy right there is in junior high school and it's great to see them after they won the for best drama because i think i believe the girl's a junior hunter and um you can see the whole the, okay you gotta see it and you can see the whole family there it's it's really great and uh I remember I, was, I showed this one to my wife, and uh, she's like, gosh, it almost brings a tear to my eye at the end, because it really does. It's good. It so th- the videos cannot be, o- this one is about at the limit. It's five minutes is the limit on the videos. But that's something because the festival has been going so long, we're considering changing for certain categories and make condensing them a little bit. Stampsy, uh, uh, just like it sounds, S-T-A-M-P-S-Y. It's a new website. I got it off Product Hunt. It's a great website. So instead of making pins, you're making stamps, and it takes it, it you know, but the, um, the it takes all these videos, and it makes it into a nice-looking website. It almost reminds me of Sway by Microsoft. I've been watching Sway by Microsoft, how it comes down, and they're, they're trying to get a little bit fancier at Microsoft with their stuff. And, and so... So Sway, I think, is the first example of Microsoft might be trying to make its comeback, and it looks a lot like that. But Stampsy is a free website. Anybody can start using it. So it's really good. And if you follow the Video BSD um, Twitter today, I'll tweet a link to one of the other videos on Stampsy, and then you can go ahead and, you know, look at, then you can probably get to the site from there. 
Oh, that's great. So there it is. But okay, yeah, it's a it's a great thing, and uh, yeah, this was one of my sessions at Mobile 2015 Learning Experience. I wonder who invited me. Oh wait, it was Tony Vincent. It was you. So it was good. And I don't know. I just like to do stuff that's that's different. And I think that this is really something where we're trying to combine maker spaces, coding, and video creation. I'm really a big fan of the creativity using technology right now. And uh, you can do this in the classroom. No, no. Uh, Scott Hackey is the originator. He's the person who luckily retired, and I took his job. And so Scott Hackey gets the credit, and Todd Freemuth is another person. Those are the two main people. From 2007. So right, there's some stuff from there, 2007. And so we have some different examples. They were, um, they're big fans of like the printed stuff, and I keep saying, you don't need all the printed stuff here. You, you, we can, but um, I like some of it just so, for archiving so it. Had really good graphic design. Yes, yes. And so what what I'm trying to do is I always I always was talking to to Scott a little bit about it and I said, "Okay, we need to get our like logo a little bit more concise and things." But yeah, he has his I I really like the stuff. He he's been a digital arts teacher in Beaverton um gosh, since the late 80s, I believe. So, yeah. And we have it at a big uh we have a big screen where we show all the winners. So everybody in the auditorium, and we we have to actually it takes like an hour to raise up the screen, and we have a nice time lapse of that too. I could tweet that out too, but yeah, that I, I, that's because I learned from Tony Vincent. You can make cool. T this is a good opportunity for a time lapse video, and then we made that one. So it's pretty cool. But yeah, thanks for stopping by. We John, you are and we we need we need okay. some serious hearts for for John Samuelson. Thanks everybody for listening. Stampsy, like that. Stamps. People are jumping all over that. Okay, good. Yeah, so pins are out, stamps are in. I just like. Um, I think if you teachers, if you look on Product Hunt every day, Product Hunt is the best website to look at new things and then maybe hack them a little bit or change them for to fit your educational needs. That's what uh, I do. Or just pay attention to what John says because you're always on top of those. You can always yeah, and I tweet them out. You can always follow me on Twitter. The old old iPad Sammy, new just myself, yeah. John Samuelson. <laughs> thanks, John. I'm no, so glad thanks, to, yeah. that I got to run into you. Yeah, and I'll even see you next week at Tech Camp. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting ready to jump on a plane on Sunday and come right back. There and come right back. All right, <laughs> I'll see you there. John is great. We we do a, a Tech Camp in Tucson for the Arizona K-12 Center, and he's. Uh, co-teaching one of the, the, the week-long classes for teachers that we have down on there. Uh, he's teaching with um, John Spencer about uh, making your writing published. So uh, follow, follow John Samuelson because I'm sure he'll be tweeting out from that camp all week. I might even be periscoping from the camp. So um, now, I'm just, now I'm just wandering around. But uh, as I'm wandering around, so many people here have mentioned... They must follow me on Periscope, and they say that I keep making their phone buzz so much. But I've only been doing, like, maybe the most five in one day, maybe four. But I guess that those notifications can add up. Um, oh, here's students here. So let's, let's do that one. Uh, body chemistry. Do you guys mind being on camera, being on the Internet? You don't mind? Okay. So, so I have a microphone so that people can hear you really good. I want to know all about your poster here called body chemistry so can who wants to do the the most of the talking you okay <laughs> so tell us who you are and where you're from and, and tell us about your poster okay hi we're from mexico city we are from godwin institute and we came here with our project that is named bodies chemistry it's an app from the app store you can download it it's totally free it's about here it is app store <laughs> and it's a game based like on yes that's the icon <laughs> it's a game it's play like mostly candy crush it the levels are divided in the parts you have on your body we have the brain the blood that's the brain and it tells you like you have oxygen magnesium carbon and oxygen in your body and you play making as many match as you can you got 37 minutes 37 seconds to make as many as you can it's making chains if you don't know which chain to make or anything 
you make the shuffle button and it will cause you to move but it will shuffle all the elements and we do also have the part like where you learn what does the oxygen does in your body and there's a brief explanation. So you learn before you play? Yes, we learn it. <laughs> we got our chemistry class and we were like it would be really useful to have on your phone what does the oxygen for classes does in your body, what does the hydrogen and so on, the fluoride, fluoride and sodium and so on. Well, it also have a part, like here, where if you play, it all it is not all, all like only the part of the game, but if you put brain, it will comes the elements that are in the brain. Like it is not only like okay, I'm gonna play. So because you only also learn because while you are like playing. Like in your brain, it stays, <laughs> it stays the um, elements that are in your brain, well, in this case, or in your skin, or in your bones, and so on. Uh, and well, we came up with the idea, well, we developed this project because um, in our school, we're from Mexico City, the teacher told us that the subject in which students struggle the most is chemistry. and the, And she told us, why not you like you create an app which can motivate and get interested, will make the students interested in chemistry by using this app. While you play, you learn. And yeah, I love that concept. Okay. Can I ask questions now? Yes. All right. So first of all, before a question, you might have the best giveaway. This is so neat for an app. This is an eraser, correct? Yes. So it's an eraser with their app icon on one side and a QR code that I'm assuming goes to the app store to download it. Goes to the page. Goes to the page about it, and then you could download. That is genius. I love these. I can have one, right? Yes, of course. Uh, oh, and a pencil. Oh, awesome. Body cam. So that's the name of the app. So now um, we're uh, some questions online, too, for people that are, that are watching. Uh, did you, was it all female people that, that worked on this? So. So no, no boys involved. That's that's you're the team, the the three of you. Uh, did you have? Were there other teams at your school building different apps? Um, no, no really. not. It was just they created. We have other two teams created, but web page, not an app. No. Uh, okay, so then what did you use to make the app? We use Xcode, the software from Mac. It's an app. It's an app to create specifically apps for the app store. <laughs> yeah, so that's not, sometimes there's these websites that you can kind of make, you know, you code online, but you're using the re real deal. You're using what all the other, you know, big time programmers in the app store use, right? When you're using Xcode. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So what was your biggest surprise in making your own app? All the research you have to do because it is not only like the design; it also like you have to think what you're gonna do because it is not also not it is not just like okay, I'm going to create an app, but what what I'm gonna use the like purpose. the purpose, so on. Yeah. Also, like to see like you upload your app and then to see like a hundred people download it, you are like wow, <laughs> they want my app and they search it and they find it. I think that's really like exciting. Do you, do you guys check every day to see your downloads? Not every day, but yes, like twice. <laughs> I have an app in the app store called Stick Around, and I check at, the first thing I do in the morning before I like even get out of bed is I get my phone. I'm like, okay, what are the sales? Because they only Apple only reports it every 24 hours, right? So, um, and so I, I'm just always interested to see, you know, how many, how many, and it's all over the place. If yours is anything like mine, you know, one day you have several, and the next day it's like, oh, we're like one or zero. To see, like, it was downloaded in Asia, and Apple. you can see what countries they were downloaded in. So Apple makes all this information available to developers when they've submitted to the App Store. Yes, that's really exciting to see. I got a hundred downloads. You are like, wow, my app is on a hundred iPhones all over the world. Uh, people want to know the name of your school. Godwin, Godwin Institute. Okay, can I, let, me, let me get your logo there for your school. The Goodwin Institute. In Mexico City. How long are you in the United States for then? Are you staying one week you're here? Nice. 
Anything else you want us to know about your app or what you learned from it? Well, no, it's basically it. And we will be so excited to know if it works for people to help really a student like eighth graders, seventh graders that are studying chemistry. And I think it will be very. Do you have plans for a future app? What? Do you have plans for a future app? Well, by the time, no. We're like in the process for arranging the app for iPad, for it looks like equal to the one that is on, on the iPhone. So people ask me because I have one app and I don't want any any others because I just want to work on that one because it, it takes time, right? So how long did it? Can you tell me a timeline of when you started your app to what it is today? Um, we started it like in February, and we like finished like in May, kind of. Did you know Xcode before you got started, or you learned Xcode because you had this app idea? Yes, because my friend Ceci, last year, she made a, an app about math, so... And you wanted to do it too? Yeah, yeah, we participated. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you for sharing. People have, and when, if they, if, when they like something, they can give hearts, so let's see, let's see the hearts. Oh, there they are. Oh, and it's going to get colorful. They do. They do. I love that you're learning and helping other people learn at the same time. Yes. That's brilliant. I'm so glad you came to ISTE. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your time here. Yeah, it's, it, it, it exceeds on, on YouTube. So if, if you follow me on Twitter, is it on there? Um, Tony Vincent. You'll see it. You could even tune in right now if you get the Periscope app. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you. They were amazing, and they tag team that so well. It was it was really good. Edutopia has a booth. Well, the thing about Periscope is it never tells you how much battery you have left. You just have to wait until you get that warning. So. I think I am going to wind down here. I have a session at 1.15 uh, about my app, Stick Around. I get a half hour to kind of talk, talk about it. I, I want it to be like half about the development and the things I've learned, kind of like the insight that, that those girls had, had said too. So um, that's exciting to see. Though a lot of people have been leaving ISTE, like they say they're, um, they're gone. Oh, is Wendy periscoping? She might. Um, I didn't get to Periscope my session this morning. I wanted to do like a, like a pre-show when I was walking around talking to people, but we had a terrible connection in that room. So it really depends on the room here at ISTE yeah, um, if internet works. But like I was saying, so many people are leaving early that maybe the uh, internet will get better because there won't be so many people here. Um, so uh, the other thing I, I plan to do, I've taken a lot of pictures when I go to sessions or things that... I couldn't record from and I think I'll take you guys through my photo album as a way to kind of review what I've what I've seen at ISTE so uh, keep your notifications on or check back later to see that so I uh, guess I'm off to find lunch <laughs> we'll see you later